So I was uh, replacing the cord on my all year 2901 uh, soldering pen because uh, A, I'd broken it and 2, it was a bit too short for my taste. So I figured we'd have a bit of a look at the insides of a pen while it's apart to get a sense of how this uh, tip ring sleeve type uh, tip system works. So the big thing about these soldering stations is that uh, the way you swap tips is you just uh, shove them into the socket like that with no screwing around involved. Haha. <laughs> so the construction of a pen is pretty simple. You've just got this uh, uh, tip holder which is shoved into the handle. You've got the strandle leaf going over the cable, it's just a friction fit. And uh, then the tip screws on in order to hold everything in place. Really nothing fancy going on at all, and then you just shove the tip in and the mechanism uh, gets pressed into a little ridge in there in order to keep everything together. And here's a closer look at the actual tip socket. Now, you might notice that uh, there are just three pins on it. You've got the blue wire going to a ground here, which uh, is to the outermost part of the uh, TRS connection. Then you've got the green and black parallel to the middle one, and the red and white to the end one. You might be wondering, well, where's the uh, thermistor connector? And uh, that's another part of the soldering station. Uh, you know, also notice that you've got the heater wires paralleled up. And that's because the actual heater element is what makes up the thermistor in these devices, because they are tapping the voltage drop across the heater in order to figure out the temperature of the tip. And uh, that might seem a bit dodgy at first, but it seems to work very well. And it allows them to save on uh, one connect, or actually two connectors on this. This particular station has had a bit of uh, quality control issues with this particular device because when I got it, the spring loading on these it was not anywhere near enough, so I constantly had uh, tip connection issues. And that's uh, one issue which you, you do run into when you're using the heat as the sensor uh, because you will be very strongly affected by the contact resistance of these two pins. If they're dirty or they're not, not pressing against the connector properly, uh, they're not going to give you a very good you know, signal since you need to be passing a fair amount of current in order to actually see the resistance. But uh, after I actually just did two, took a screwdriver and pushed these in a bit to make them press a bit harder, it's worked very well for a very long time. So the actual way they've attached these wires here seems to be just uh, soldered, I hope. If they're welded or something, I'm going to have some issues, but they, they do look soldered. In the other end of the cable, you have a 5-pin connector. As you can see, the wires which are paralleled in the other end are now split out to various pins in the connector to actually provide a separate heater feed and feedback connectors. If we strip back some of the original wire which came with the pen, it seems to be of pretty decent quality. It's a silicon rubber wire, it's reasonably flexible, not uh, uh, not as flexible as, as it could be, but the outermost layer is quite thick on it. We've got the uh, five wires, black, red, blue, green and white, and uh, quite a considerable amount of very uh, fluffy stranding to increase the softness of the wire and it's, it seems to be a pretty good quality wire. I would say that uh, these are probably Teflon uh, conductors too because they're very slick and they slide very easily t against each other. So there's nothing wrong there. The amount of copper I'd say this is about 0.3 square millimeter or something like that. Not hugely thick, it just needs to carry a couple of amps for the heater. It has the replacement wire I got off of AliExpress and it seems to be of very very similar quality. Also Teflon conductors, a silicon outer shell, uh, a bit less but a fine as stranded a stranding. So I think this is going to work out quite well. Actually when you put these wires side by side they really look very very similar. I'd almost say that they might be coming from the same factory because the feel of these wires is practically identical. And here is the finished thing with its new 2 meter cord. So everything went very well doing this. Uh, the 
TRS connection can easily be soldered. I just used my spare iron to put it together. The strain relief was originally just a single twisted tie around here. It's got some indents for that. And I used some uh, just lab wire for it and it seems to be quite sturdy. Sturdy enough at least. Little trap is to not forget to put this thing on because if it, I was lucky I forgot it and uh, on the original cord this was very very tight so pulling this over two meters of cord would just have been painful so that's a little tidbit to keep in mind. So the pin out of this thing for future reference uh, my new cord has the same uh, colors as the old one so it makes everything easy. Uh, on this uh, one side we've got uh, red and white, in the middle we've got blue and on the other side we've got uh, black and green. And for the soldering station end we've got uh, black, red, white, blue and green. So let's just see if this still goes together. I was just squeezes in there. The handle uh, seems to be uh, just ever so slightly thinner than the strain relief, so when you actually force the strain relief in there, it puts some pressure on the cable. And getting this strain relief all the way on has been a bit of a bother every time I've had this apart. It's never really wanted to do it properly and uh, uh, I actually damaged my old wire, that's why I replaced it, by just forcing this too hard so the outer insulation snapped around there. So it was just uh, uh, the bare inner conductors and that was not very good for durability. <sighs> yeah, it seems this does not want to go on fully today. Oh well, that's good enough for me. Like new. So does it all work? Have I ruined everything? No, that seems to be heating up. Yep. That's perfectly good. So now I've finally got a chance to use it in both ends of the bench. So, yeah, that's a bit of a look into the a pen part of an OU 2900 series soldering station. Uh, shouldn't you keep in mind the newer stations has a different revision pen which uh, seems to be a lot nicer than this one. I haven't taken one apart but I can't say for certain if that uh, uh, you know, comes apart in the same way and if it's got as easily replaceable a cord. But uh, this old model certainly has a quite easy to fix thing. So thank you for watching. Cheerio. And if you're curious as to what my spare iron might be, is this old uh, fix point thing. And I think these are actually still a current model, and this reel has served me very well for many years. And it's received a few modifications, and I'm not going to be able to make it out in this light, but it's actually got a backlight mounted.